Hello and welcome to today's lesson on force extension graphs, which forms part of the materials topic in AQA A-level physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to look at how to analyze force extension graphs of materials. So if we are successful and learn in today's lesson, we can recall Hooke's law, understand the behavior of elastic objects and understand the behavior of inelastic objects, which forms part of the AQA physics specification in 3.4.2.1 bulk properties of solids. Now previously we've looked at the force extension graph of a steel spring but the force and extension can also be measured for a rubber band and here is a force extension graph of a rubber material. Now when you look at this information you ask yourself does this rubber material obey Hooke's law and could you calculate the spring constant for rubber from this information? Well it's important to note that in this example rubber does not obey Hooke's law because the line of our force extension graph is not straight so therefore it means force and extension are never directly proportional now since there's no straight line section of the graph there's no possible area in our graph to calculate the spring constant because it needs to be the gradient of a straight line part of a force extension graph now we've also previously noted that the area under the curve for a force extension graph shows the amount of elastic potential energy stored in the rubber band now therefore to calculate the area of this example you can count the squares of the graph and split the area into different shapes or you could possibly integrate the equation of the line. Now when you consider the force extension measurements for loading a rubber band and unloading a rubber band with weight you achieve the following curve. Now it's important to note that the blue line shows the results for loading the rubber band. Now loading the material is when the deformant force on the material is ever so slightly increased continually i.e. you add weights onto the material. Now the red line shows the results for unloading the rubber band. Now unload a material is when the deformant force on the material is decreased. You would remove those weights being placed on the rubber band. So you can see here that we have two different lines, one for loading the rubber material and the one for unloading the rubber material. So this shows to us that the rubber band has different material properties when loading compared to unloading. So this is important because it tells us that the loading process has inelastically deformed the material. Now it's important to note that the loading line has a greater area under the curve. So you can say that when the material is being loaded, it is storing more elastic potential energy, whilst the red unloading line has a smaller area under the curve, so less elastic potential energy is stored by the material when it's being unloaded. So because we have different areas under the curve for each line, this indicates there's a difference Different amount of elastic potential energy stored in the material between loading and unloading. So if there's less elastic potential energy in the material when unloading compared to loading, the questions you've got to ask yourself are firstly why and what work has been done in this situation for the elastic potential energy store to change. Now the difference in energy stored in the rubber band is due to some energy becoming internal energy of the molecules. So before we have our our loading and unloading process, our particles are acting in a material which is elastic. Now, if the object is acting like an elastic, when it is put under tension, the atoms of the material are moved, are moved apart from each other. They're ever so slightly pulled apart. Now, atoms can move small distances relative to their equilibrium positions without actually changing position in the material, because once that load is then removed, the atoms return to their original equilibrium distance apart. So the material would still be obeying Hooke's law, it would still act like an elastic. However, sometimes the particles can, can actually act after they've been elastically formed in a different manner. Now, if a deformation is inelastic, the material is permanently stretched. So after the force is removed, it's still stretched. So therefore, some of the atoms in the material move position relative to each other. So when the load is removed, the atoms do not return to their original position. The material has been stretched past its elastic limit. So this stretching effect makes the molecules absorb energy and start to vibrate faster, which increases the internal energy of the band. So the energy is changed. Store work is being done. 
so the internal energy of the molecules increases and this increases the temperature of the rubber band so work is being done by the rubber band now we derive the work done by the rubber band and how much has changed in the internal energy of the band by measuring the change in the areas under the curve so here we've got the elastic potential energy stored when the rubber band is being loaded here is the elastic potential energy stored when the rubber band is being unloaded so the difference between the loading areas under the curve and the unloading area under the curve is the work done by the rubber band so the work is being done to rearrange the atoms of the material and energy is transferred to the thermal energy store of the object and its surroundings now this is actually used in the crumple zones of vehicles like cars and lorries as they inelastically deform during a crash so less energy is transferred to the passengers now the force extension graphs show the behavior of a sample of a material with a particular shape and size so this example here is a force extension graph of a rubber band now it's important to note that the unloading line goes through the origin that's because the rubber band is returned to the original its original length when the deformant force is removed it is acting elastically now the area under the loading curve is the work done to stretch the rubber band the area under the unloading curve is the work done by the rubber band unloaded now the area between the loading and unloading curves is the difference between the energy stored in the stretched rubber band and the energy recovered when unstretched so therefore the difference between the energy stored and the energy recovered is because some energy is transferred to the internal energy of the molecules now this particular force extension graph is one of a metal wire now you'll notice the unloading line does not go through the origin that's because the wire has been permanently stretched by the loading and unloading process now again the area between the loading and unloading lines is the work done to permanently deform the wire inelastically now you'll notice that the loading and unloading lines are parallel as the bulk properties of the metal stay constant so it's not changing its actual material properties it's just now become inelastic now finally this is the force extension graph of a plastic strip now the unloading line once again does not go through the origin because the plastic plastic strip has been permanently stretched, it has been inelastically deformed. Now the area between the loading and unloading curve is the sum of the work done to deform the strip and the energy transferred to the internal energy of the molecules. So we should be able from today's lesson have a description of plastic behaviour and link this to force extension graphs, have a quantitative and qualitative application of energy conservation to examples involving elastic strain energy and energy to deform and the idea that spring energy is transferred to kinetic and gravitational potential energy. So if if we've been successful and learnt in today's lesson, we should be able to recall Hooke's law, understand the behaviour of elastic objects and understand the behaviour of inelastic objects. So I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson on force extension graphs which is part of the material topics in AQA A-level physics. Thank you very much for listening and as always, have a lovely day.